Hey, good evening everybody. Uh, just giving everybody a heads up. We're just going to give it a minute or two before we get started. Um, let a few more people join uh, and then we're going to get started as soon as uh, I'm seeing a lot of people joining right now. So give it a minute or so and, th and then we'll get started. It's nice to see a few familiar faces on the call, uh, familiar names. I've seen uh, some of our great past clients. Uh, so, Andrew, nice to see you on there. Nick, Nick, thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, Ricky. Yeah, just, we're just going to give it another 30 seconds and then, and then we're going to get started. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I want to thank everybody for taking the time this evening to join us and uh, for a special early look at the United Building at University in Dundas. It really is one of the most exciting condominium projects of the year, and we're excited to, to be involved in this one and, and to share some early information with you. Uh, tonight, we're going to try our best to educate you on why we think that this is going to be a very special project uh, and talk about how you can be one of the first to invest in this condominium. Uh, we, we are going to go through a lot of information tonight uh, and we're going to try and wrap the webinar up in about half an hour. Uh, but just in case you do miss something or want to go back on anything, uh, you will be receiving a copy of the slides this evening uh, as well as a copy, uh, a video recording of the webinar. Just to introduce myself for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Roy Bandari uh, and I am the co-founder of TalkCondo.com uh, and I'm a broker of record at Sage Talk Condo Brokerage. Um, our team, we specialize in uh, helping buyers get into high demand new condo launches just like this one. Uh, before we go any further, uh, on the right side of your screen, you should have a little uh, a box that looks something like this. Um, if you have any questions, uh, as we go through the presentation, feel free to ask the questions using the using the box there. Um, I'm not going to be doing a live Q and A tonight. It does take uh, it ends up r making the webinar run very very long. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the questions uh, and we'll get back to you one on one uh, by email or phone, uh, depending on how you like to be communicated with. So just just fill in your questions as we go, uh, and, and we'll definitely get back to you. For this condominium project, we often do uh, video interviews, and, and for this one, we got a chance to sit down with Barbara Lawler, who is the CEO and president of Baker Real Estate, uh, and she gave us some really awesome insights to this project. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Baker Real Estate is one of the largest uh, new condominium sales and marketing companies, and uh, they handle uh, almost 25% of, uh, of new condo sales uh, year in, year out, and they work with some of the uh, biggest builders um, and they've got some really unique insights into the market and unique insights into this project um, so yeah it was a, a lot of fun interviewing Barbara uh, and we recommend definitely checking that video out so this evening we're obviously going to talk about uh, the United Condos at University in Dundas uh, but we do want to highlight that this is a preview webinar. Uh, this condominium has not yet launched and it will not launch until next Wednesday, March the 27th. Uh, that will be the first day that we uh, get the re full release of floor plans and pricing. And we typically run these pre-launch webinars for condos that are very, very high in demand. Uh, and the reason is, is because it helps you get some key information on a condo project ahead of time so that you're prepared for the launch. In new condos like this where demand is usually higher than supply, um, we find that buyers who are prepped in advance typically have the most success in securing the suites that they want. So here's a couple of reasons that we're giving you this information a week ahead of time. The first is, obviously, uh, that the early demand for this condominium has been very high. 
we come to expect this, especially for condo launches and the downtown core uh, in these AAA locations. The second reason, and probably the most important reason for us running this webinar a week before the condo launches, and it's something I alluded to earlier, but it's because we really believe that buyers who are well prepared before the project launch, before the project actually launches are the ones that are going to be the best placed to secure their suites. So hopefully tonight we're going to go through a lot of information, but it gets you one step closer. But here's what not to expect tonight. The condominium has not launched, so we don't have the pricing for this condominium yet. We don't have some of the specifics like the maintenance fees, uh, and we don't have the deposit structure. So we're not going to touch on, uh, on any, three, uh, any one of those three things. But here is what we will cover. We're going to talk about the importance of working with uh, platinum brokers and uh, front of line agents, and we're going to show you how that plays out in the real world. Um, I want to touch on why pre-construction condos as an investment vehicle, why we continue to invest in pre-construction condos, uh, why our clients, we're seeing more and more multiple time investors now who, who have bought one in the past, they're now buying two and three and four, and why they're doing that, why people like this investment vehicle. Uh, we're going to talk about what the hell is happening in Toronto uh, in a time when uh, markets are dropping uh, on the suburbs, uh, slowing down. We're seeing Toronto have the opposite effect where uh, demand is still very high. And we want to talk about some of the reasons we believe that is and why we believe that's going to be sustained moving forward. We're obviously going to talk about this condominium project, the United, um, and then we're going to talk about how you're able to buy uh, and some key dates that you need to be aware of. So I want to start by talking about working with the right agent and working with platinum agents, especially on new condo launches. Now, we know there's a lot of people on this call that are familiar with this. Um, we, we do have some new uh, investors on the call as well. So we, we do want to sort of highlight some of this. Uh, it, it'll be a nice refresher for some of those of you that are already aware of how this plays out. Um, but we we're going to go through this relatively quickly. So our team, we're, we've been pre-construction condo brokers, me and myself and my brother Amit, uh, for the last 10 years. And we operate one of the largest new condo portals on the internet, uh, which is talkcondo.com. We have front of line access to some of the biggest builders in Toronto. And one of the unique things that we do to highlight these powerful relationships is that we interview these developers and sales managers and architects that we otherwise would have we, we just wouldn't have access to these people if we, if we didn't have that kind of front of line access. We love doing these interviews because it gives us and gives our clients a really unique perspective on these condo projects. For this project specifically, um, the developers flew out myself uh, and 12 other platinum brokers to New York to introduce this project uh, and, and to give us a first look at this project. And again, this is just highlighting that uh, developers, they don't just fly out any brokers, they fly out the platinum brokers um, to these kinds of events. And, and we were very, very fortunate here. This is a picture of myself along with the other brokers. Um, and in the middle there is uh, Jeff Clark, who is the sales manager uh, for the United. So uh, we just wanted to highlight that. And again, we, I already uh, mentioned, but uh, for this project, we got to interview uh, the CEO and president of, of Baker Real Estate, who, again, is just not a person that um, the average agent would have access to. And, and having her share her vision with the project was, was, was great and really exciting. So we've talked about the credentials, but the main reason I want to do that is because it's becoming so important to, have, to be working with the agents who have these front of line access and who are these uh, day one agents and we call them platinum agents or day one agents or whatever you want to call them. But the importance of this is how it plays out in the real world. And again, we understand that a lot of people uh, know how this plays out, but we, we, we're hoping we've got some examples here that some people haven't seen. So, uh, so we're just going to go through this very quickly. So if you're not familiar with what a typical condo launch looks like, there's typically five launches. Um, Every, this doesn't play out for every single condominium, but it plays out for most condominiums. And this is a pretty uh, typical way that a condominium developer will launch their project. So this, the first launch is when a, pro a developer gets his, uh, his pricing and his floor plans, he'll go to his f uh, direct family and friends. It may not be an event here, but they may go to their you know, brother or their aunt or their uh, son or whatever it is. And, and if they want to buy a unit, they're going to get the best pricing, obviously. 
The first opportunity for uh, an investor to buy um, is what's called the platinum launch. And this is an industry term. Um, this is when you get the best prices, uh, you get the best incentives, um, you get the best suite selection because uh, most of the building is available right now. Uh, but this is the best time that you wanna be investing in a new condominium. Once they start launching to the other agents, the VIP agents, what tends to happen is they increase the price, they remove incentives, and you start to, what ends up happening is you're paying more for the leftover units. And as we go through the, the, the cycle, you'll see uh, on this model that as you go through the stages, you're gonna be paying more and more. Of course, with Talk Condo, and why we emphasize this uh, so much is, is that we do wanna get our clients in on day one pricing. and. We wanted to show some real life examples of this. And like I said, a lot of people know how this plays out, but what they don't know is how we track it internally. And, and the next couple of slides, we've never shown anybody. And that's how we track price changes uh, internally for, uh, for new condominiums. And this is a system that we've invested uh, countless hours, countless energy. Um, we've got our dollars behind it. And the reason we do this, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like, but we track uh, the price changes of every single condominium um, on a floor plan level. So we know which floor plans have increased when. So, and I'm gonna show you this example. I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of this. So this is what the back end system of, 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 of ours looked like. And this was a condo that launched at the back end of last year. And if you look at the bottom there, there's, there's a little section called price history. Uh, and and this, is, this is the price history of this floor plan. Now this data is all collected manually. Um, this is talk condo data. This is not some industry data that we tap into. Um, the reason we collect this data is so that when we sit down with clients and when we when we um, emphasize the importance of buying day one, we can back it up with real data. So this is an example of, uh, of a condominium that launched at the back end of last year. We can see here, this is the day one pricing. Uh, in this example, it's 662,000 to buy this, uh, buy this uh, two bedroom unit. And then on November the 11th, which is, uh, about three weeks, two weeks later, there was a $51,000 increase for this unit. Exact same unit. Um, the only difference here is that you're buying, not on day one, you're buying on day two or the VIP launch. Um, and then if you look again here, we see that this particular unit before it was tagged sold out, there was one more price increase, uh, which was uh, set, it jumped to 735,000 uh, on December the 5th. And if you see this, um, you see that the, the pricing escalation of this particular unit uh, was huge. So just missing that boat by a few weeks, uh, you're paying uh, over 10% more, much more than 10% more for the same unit. I did want to show one more example of this. Uh, this is another unit that this was a one bedroom unit um, just that launched just uh, a month ago. Uh, here we see the day one price and this is the platinum price. And then two weeks later they did the, uh, the VIP launch. And you can see here there was a $27,000 increase uh, for the exact same suite. Uh, and again, this is just highlighting that importance. And I do want to show one more example, uh, not to harp on this too much, but the reason I want to show this next example um, is because so this is, this is an example of a project that launched in 2015. So we don't just have this data in our system for you know something that's just launched a month ago or two months ago or three months ago. We actually have this data going back years and years and years. So for projects that have gone through the entire life cycle, we can see uh, what that looks like. And, and this, was a, this is actually a project called One Yorkville, which launched many, many years ago. Um, and this is the pricing of a one bedroom. And we can see here that um, in uh, back then when the, when the market wasn't moving as aggressively as it has been, um, we can see that there was a big price jump of $73,000 uh, a few months after day one. Now, the reason I wanna bring this up is that uh, our sample size for data on, on this importance of buying on day one is not small. We, we go back years and years and, and, and we see this trend time and time and time again. So this is something that's really important um, and it's, it's a very, very important concept to understand. So the next one uh, we want to talk about is pre-construction condos as an investment vehicle. Now. We talk a lot about the, about this concept of getting wealthy using other people's money. Um, it's it's the, the the idea behind um, leveraging your money to to grow your wealth uh, is one of the biggest reasons that we believe uh, new condos is is such an incredible incredible investment vehicle. 
And anybody who's gotten wealthy by investing in real estate will understand this. It's a fundamental um, and it's, I'm not reinventing the wheel here, uh, but I do just want to highlight this because I think it's, it's, it's very, very unique. So here's an example of um, what, uh, and I'm going to break this chart down and, and, and point to what you need to be paying attention to. But uh, what I want to show here is, is under the assumption that you've purchased a, a condominium for $600,000 what that equity growth would look like over the lifetime of construction. So what's unique about new condos is that um, on a $600,000 purchase, the equity that you're required to put up during construction is only 20%. Now, this is, this is unique because you're buying an appreciating asset um, with pennies on the dollar. Um, and that balance, that 480,000, that 80% of the 600,000, you're not paying interest on it, you're not, uh, you're not paying it down, that's being covered by the developer at no cost to you for the duration of construction. And that's what makes this vehicle so, so, so unique. And again, I think a lot of people who do this know that they're doing this, but to see it spelled out, I think really, really helps emphasize what I'm talking about. We actually call this process wealth hacking um, because you're able to buy that appreciating asset with pennies on the dollar. So in this example, we see that on a $600,000 purchase, your equity is 120,000. That's your investment. And what we did was uh, we showed the value of what that condominium would look like by 2025. And we're using 2025 here because that is the date that uh, United will be completing. So we used uh, an annual growth rate of 5%. And I want to just pause on 5% for one second because 5% is a very, very, very conservative number for the growth, uh, the market growth that we're anticipating over the next few years. So going back five years, if we look at the Bay Street corridor, this, this prime corridor of real estate um, where United is located, the five-year growth here was 67.9%. If you annualize that, just for simplicity, and I understand that annualizing doesn't quite work by just chopping it by five, uh, but just for simplicity and just to keep this, uh, this model working, um, if you annualize that, the growth is 13.58% per year. And to be conservative, we used 5% per year. And at 5% a year, the property value will grow from 600,000. And if you do it 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, you'll see that the value grows to, uh, the equity growth grows to 204,000 uh, and a return on equity of 170%. And that's using that very, very conservative 5% per year growth rate. Another number that I wanna highlight here, and this is such an important number is this one right here. So if the market only grows at 5% a year, because you've only put down uh, the 20%, in this situation, it only takes you four years to double your equity. In this case, by year, the end of year four, your equity has grown from 120,000. It's grown by an additional 129,000 for a return on equity of 107%. And I want to just for just to re-emphasize what this would look like if we said like i said the the percentage of growth in this pocket the the bay street corridor um, was between 13 and 14 percent i said let's say over the next five years let's chop that number in half and let's make the annual growth uh seven percent what would that look like and you can start to see these models and and how they uh, how they show that growth and how why we believe this is a, a form of wealth hacking um, you can see that uh, by that time, by the time you get your keys, uh, your equity has grown from 120,000. It's grown an additional uh, 300,000, which is a 250% increase in just six years. So one of the things, rules that I wanted to talk about is, is, is the rule of 72. Um, and the rule of 72, um, if you're not familiar with this uh, investment rule, um, is that if you take 72, you divide it by, um, divide it by your investment percentage, it will tell you how long it takes to for an investment to double. So for example, if you have a return on investment of 10% per year, you would take your 72, you would divide it by 10, and it will tell you it takes 7.2 years to double. 
Now, what we wanted to do is let's say let's say you bought a condo, but you also you have this hundred and twenty thousand, and you have a few different options of of how to invest that money. The first option is you can leave it in a bank, and if you leave it in a savings account, you're going to earn a percent a year using that seventy two rule of seventy two. It's going to take seventy two divided by one. 72 years for that $120,000 to turn into $250,000, uh, $240,000, sorry. If you got a GIC and you and you played around with some short-term GICs and moved the money around and, and, and just for argument's sake and consistency, you got a consistent 3.5% uh, grow, uh, growth on that every single year, it would take you 20 years for that $120,000 to turn into two hundred and forty. dollars if you wanted to play the stock market, um, and we looked at the TSS, uh, TSX index, uh, and if you hit the benchmarks and invested in the TSX capped composite index, which returned just under 7% per year over the last five years, it would take uh, just over 10 years for you to, to turn to double that money. It's going to take you 10 years to turn 120000 into 240000 If you go back to that previous slide, if the condo market only grows at 5%, it takes you just four years uh, to grow that money. So we really believe in this investment vehicle for growing wealth. Um, it's such a unique one. Uh, we call it wealth hacking. Um, I think it's. I think if you pick the right projects, um, it's such a powerful way to, to for your money to work for you. <clears throat> so next, we want to talk a little bit about. What the hell is happening in Toronto? So the reason we want to talk about this is, is because it's important to understand what's happening in our city because ultimately that is what you're investing in. The, the, you really have to believe in what's going on in, in Toronto. Um, and while some of the sub-markets and the low-rise housing has suffered, it has flatlined and the demand has dropped, the opposite's happening in Toronto where demand is rem uh, remains strong and we're still seeing prices escalate and we're still seeing rents escalate. Um, so we want to talk a little bit about why that's happening. Uh, we have some ideas on why we think, why we think that is going on uh, and we want to share that with you. So starting with some basics, uh, immigration is still the primary growth, growth factor for the Toronto market. Uh, we know that uh, approximately uh, 300,000 people uh, move to Canada every year, of which about 30% move to Toronto, which makes it approximately 100,000 people are moving to uh, the GTA in the Toronto area every single year, which means over the next two years, we're going to see 200,000 and so forth, so on and so forth. We're also in this unique time where we're, we've got this uh, really unique situation. We call it a perfect storm, and we're going to talk about what that means. Vacancy rates we know are already below 1%. So we know that what's built in Toronto right now, it's already occupied. There's not much more. Uh, we don't have an abundance of empty uh, empty. Uh, condominiums and what's happened is that over the last few years the OMB the change from OMB has been huge what we're talking about here is the reason that the demand is that the supply side is being affected um, so in 2008 uh, the OMB was replaced and what I'm not what I'm not gonna spend a lot of time and talk about what the OMB system is but essentially the OMB was the mechanism which builders use to get their condominiums approved and under the old system I've talked to countless builders and what they've told me is that under the old system uh, from the time they make their application it can take 12 to 18 months to get an approval in place under the new system since they removed OMB um, it, that can that time can double and can in fact in some places take uh, up to three years to, to get an approval in place and I don't think we're really seeing the effects of this yet but we are going to see the effects of this in the next 12 24 36 months uh, because what we're starting to see is all those sites that were purchased that should be coming to market this year are not going to be coming to the market for uh, a year from now or two years from now and we're already feeling that on the ground level because normally we see a lot more new condo launches in the downtown core whereas this year it's been very limited and looking forward it's going to be very limited because all the sites that have been tied up we're just not getting the approvals for them in time 
So we've got this situation where the supply is actually being shrunk. And in the, in the next few slides, I'm actually going to show you why demand is actually going up at an all time high. So one of the biggest growth growth spurts that we've seen in Toronto over the last few years is the tech industry. Now, sometimes when this stuff is happening in your own backyard, uh, it's so it's too close to see what is actually going on. Um, so in this graph, what, what I wanted to show here was uh, the amount of tech jobs that were added in Toronto. This is in 2017, but Toronto was the number one city for, for new tech jobs being added. If you look at the numbers, Toronto added more tech jobs than the next four combined. And you can see Seattle, New York, Washington, and the Bay Area. You add those all together, and they still added less new tech jobs than Toronto. There's countless articles out there that talk about this, this phenomenon that's going on. Um, and some of the companies that are coming into Toronto, uh, Google, Microsoft, Uber, uh, Intel, Pinterest, uh, Shopify, Nvidia, uh, the, the list goes on, Thales, Ecobee, AMD. And what we're also seeing is not just companies coming in uh, brand new from that have never been in the GTA, but also we're seeing this unique situation where companies are relocating their, their suburb head, head offices and moving them to the downtown core because they want to be closer to uh, the high, the, the, the incredible new uh, labor force that's in Toronto. They want to be close to all that. So we're seeing this relocation and, and that's happened recently with Microsoft and Tim Hortons and TELUS. So this is just a, a quick rundown of what we've already talked about. Um, but as we started to look at this, um, what, what became clear was that, uh, and we're always looking at Toronto versus other cities and saying, is it, uh, are we New York, are we this? But, and we're always trying to uh, say, uh, grow towards being other cities. But what we're starting to see is a lot of parallels uh, with San Francisco. Now, when we started looking at San Francisco, um, we saw this quote in the business inside it, and it says, there's a direct correlation between these price hikes that they experienced in San Francisco and the tech industry's ever expanding presence in Silicon Valley. The tech behemoths like Google, Facebook, Apple, they all operate out of the Bay Area and recruit a, lefty, a lofty volume of high earning workers that need to find living quarters here. Uh, the workers' high salaries combined with the city's already dwindling house supply have spawned an, an, an affordability crisis within the real estate market, jacking, jacking up home values to an astronomical degree. And this rings so true to what is starting to happen in Toronto. We have this situation where the dwindling supply is happening at the same time that all these tech giants are coming into the city at a very rapid rate. So this is another quote that we pulled uh, from uh, the articles in the Toronto store, but it was uh, D uh, Doug Palmer, uh, the BMO's uh, regional uh, vice president of commercial banking that talked about this. So he said there, there's roughly 241,000 tech jobs in the GTA, making this the fourth largest tech hub in North America. And that's no small deal. Uh, and it's also the fastest growing. That's the key line here, the fastest growing. A relatively open Canadian immigration policy has helped attract tech talent to the GTA that could otherwise have ended up in Silicon Valley, Seattle, and DC. So again, this is just a quick slide showing uh, some of those uh, so some of those companies that have that have come into Toronto, and um, just to give you an idea of the size of the investment that these companies are making, they're huge. Uh, Microsoft just announced a five hundred and seventy million dollar investment, uh, bringing uh, five hundred new full time jobs. Uh, Uber's launching a new engineering hub in Toronto um, for its R and D center for self driving cars uh, with a two hundred million dollar uh, investment. Um, Shopify's announced a five hundred million dollar investment, and they're going to open the new uh, head office on on King Street. Um, but so th these numbers are huge uh, and they continue to come at a very rapid rate. The other thing that we looked at, we, we said, okay, let's say, let's uh, isolate Toronto as a tech hub and say this is, this is a growing trend that we're seeing. Uh, what we wanted to see was how, what, what kind of impact has this had on other cities that are known as tech hubs? 
Uh, and what we saw was that the, the rents for these cities that are identified as tech hubs, and we're going to outline what those cities are in a minute, uh, but the growth of, in rents was almost three times bigger than in these cities than in cities that were not considered to be tech hubs. So when we compare um, the prices and the rents of, of where we're at today compared to these other big cities that are considered to be tech hubs, uh, and this answers the question of how far can Toronto go? Um, you hear it all the time. I hear it all the time. Uh, and if I hear it, I'm sure everybody hears it. The rents are too high. Um, nobody can afford these rents. But when you really look at the data and look at this and say, where does Toronto sit? Um, you can start to see that there's a lot of room to grow. So these are the mo monthly average rents in, in uh, 2018 for San Francisco, Boston, Was Washington, D.C., Seattle, and Toronto. Um, the average rent for Toronto was 2300 uh, And I do need to co uh, confirm that these numbers have all been converted to Canadian dollars already. You don't need to do that conversion again. Uh, but you start to see the rents in Toronto are 50% of what they are in San Francisco. Uh, and there's so much room to grow in our city. So this was a, an important piece because I want to highlight that Toronto is in a very unique time right now where uh, we're going to start to see this constrained supply. Uh, at the same time, we're seeing this enormous demand uh, start to pick up and, and commercial spaces are being built to, to bring these companies in because we don't have enough commercial space now. So that's the next wave that we're seeing. We are seeing these commercial buildings being uh, built, these brand new state of the art so that we can house more of these commercial companies, uh, these tech companies. Um, so we're in a really unique time and you can quickly see why why uh, we're so uh, bullish on this on this market uh, and why we feel that uh, we continue to invest in the city um, so it's, it's a really really exciting time for Toronto so next let's talk a little bit about what you're all here to, to learn about and that's the United building so the most obvious reason why there's a lot of excitement around this condominium is the location it really really is a true AAA really offered location and it's got direct access to the uh, to the subway so there's a lot about what makes this location very special um, it's located on at university in Dundas which you can see on the map here and university is an interesting street because it's a major road it's got the subway underneath it but it doesn't have a lot of residential condominiums uh, in fact most of the land here is designated for other uses, for commercial, for the arts, for the culture. Um, and the last condominium you could buy with a university address uh, was the residences of 488 University, which launched five years ago. Uh, the other popular condominium uh, on University Avenue is the Shangri-La Residences. Uh, but we also wanted to highlight some of the things that really make University Avenue uh, special and unique. And these are the things that, as investors, we should be hucking onto. So we are close proximity uh, to five major hospitals, uh, Toronto General, Mount Sinai, the hospital for sick kids. These are at your doorstep. Uh, we've got the Princess Margaret Cancer Center. Uh, we've got the Toronto Rehabilitation, um, uh, Re uh, Rehabilitation Institute. This proximity to the medical center is so unique. Um, we're in a situation where uh, this tenant pool or potential buyer pool um, are are a set of people that uh, need to be close to work. They work long shifts, they, uh, they work midnight shifts, they're on call, they need to be close to work. So being this close to this much world-class medical uh, is, is just incredible. Um, on top of that, we've got the, uh, we're, we're very close to things like the Ontario Power Generation Building, the Mars Discovery Center, uh, the Legislative Assembly uh, Assembly Hall of Ontario, Osgood Hall, uh, and then we've got the universities, which of course is another huge talent pool. Um, we've, we've got University of Toronto, we've, we've got OCAD University, we've got Ryerson University, and we're sort of triangulated in between all of this. And, and as you start to see this picture build out, you start to see that you're in the centre of this just world-class tenant pool uh, of doctors and lawyers and university so this is a very unique situation uh, on a strip that is very rare to find residential condominiums next we want to talk about the development team and uh, obviously in today's pre-construction climate uh, buying from uh, reputable builders and architects who can put these things together uh, is more important than ever before 
So the builder here is, is DevPart Incorporated and, and they're part of the H&R development family. Uh, the H&R development, uh, developments, uh, the sister companies of DevPart are uh, companies like Linvest, uh, H&R REIT with a market cap of $6.2 billion and $17 billion in assets, a uh, very popular residential builder called Lanterra that you may have heard of, uh, Marlin Springs, uh, Altree. So they're part of, these, um, a part of this family of companies um, that does billions of dollars in real estate. And DevPart, uh, for the longest time, was the commercial and retail arm of this uh, of this company. Uh, and over the years, they've collected uh, some of the most incredible sites. And this is one of them, University uh, and Dundas, um, as commercial buildings. Another location they own is One Eglinton East, which is the, the southeast corner of the CIBC building at Young and Eglinton. Uh, they own land above uh, the office building above the Davisville subway station. So they've amassed over 90 commercial properties over the years and uh, are now converting them into condominiums and they're doing so with the expertise and the uh, of, of the this rich uh, history of H&R developments and and all the sister companies that go along with it we're also going to talk about B&H architects now B&H architects are actually very very unique because they're one of the uh, biggest architecture firms in the world um, they do a lot of commercial and what you may not know about this uh, architect is that they've had their hand on pretty much any of the major buildings in Toronto that you see they've been involved in like they, their portfolio is incredible um, they were involved in uh, the, the first Canadian place which is the tallest tower in Toronto which is the BMO tower the white one in the middle uh, Eaton Centre RBC Tower uh, the Ripley's Aquarium CN Tower um, and so much more, the, the, the Royal Ontario Museum, they were involved in the restoration of that, which is going to become important because of the, the, uh, the restoration component of this building. So we're dealing with one of the biggest companies, and this is just a, a small sample of some of the buildings that they worked on. Uh, I just wanted to highlight some of the ones that you may have been aware of uh, within that skyline. So United Building, the key features of this uh, sorry, uh, of this uh, condominium is that it's located on the northeast corner of University in Dundas. It's got direct access to the subway. Um, it's a 55 story uh, tower with uh, nine stories of commercial at grade. Uh, and I do want to touch on that nine stories of commercial. Now, this is one of the most complex parts of this building because it's that nine stories of co commercial is a heritage building. And it's one of the largest um, heritage rest uh, re uh, restorations in North America. Um, so without this combination of developer and architect, I don't know that this building gets built. Uh, it required, it's going to require an incredible amount of expertise to dig down without the removal of this, uh, this, this building while it's being restored. Um, so it's really, really spectacular. In terms of the amenities, we've got, um, uh, just world-class amenities on, across three floors, uh, both exterior and interior. Um, here's a small list. I'm not going to read read them all, uh, but on the interior, we've got this uh, stunning lobby with 24/7 concierge. Uh, we've got party room. We've got the gym. We've got the library. We've got the theater. The the golf simulator. The video game room. Uh, the sports lounge. Uh, the saunas. The pool deck. Um, like there's no amenity that's missing in the United. Here's a quick uh, look at the lobby. Um, we, we always look at the lobby of a building. It's the first uh, first feeling that you get when you walk into a, to a building. And more and more builders are putting a lot of emphasis on the quality of the lobby. Here's just a shot of some, some of the outdoor terrace space. Uh, this is on the 10th floor, which would be on the roof of the, uh, uh, roof of the commercial space. Um, Uh, again, this goes back to what we talked about before. Um, a typical build for a new condo is about four years, uh, but here we've got six years of development uh, construction time. And because this is such a complicated building, we're able to use this to our advantage. I talked about in the past where 
um, we use those leverage funds. The 20% down. The longer we have occupancy, the harder that the, the harder that 20% is working for you. Where every single year your deposits are being leveraged five to one, five to one, five to one, and it gives us more time for that uh, that those pennies on the dollar to keep working hard for us. Uh, and we have a subset of clients that love this. They they want the occupancy to be as long as possible, uh, so that their 20% can keep lever levering their their investment up and up and up uh, so this is this is a, a great feature so this is a look at the floor plate and I understand it's quite messy you probably can't get a, a, a good look at what exactly is going on here um, but in the email that you're going to get tonight you are going to get a PDF of this um, which means you can zoom into the floors uh, a little bit more and you can see what uh, what each floor plan looks like um, but this is a this is an early look at what we're expecting the, the floor plans to be uh, like I said, everybody on the call will get a copy of this. Um, but the other thing is it, it gives us an idea of the suite sizes. Um, so without looking at the specific floor plans, we can see it's a very square floor plate, which results in a lot of very clean and uh, straightforward floor plans. Uh, but we can see that studios uh, are going to be 300 square feet. You're going to have one beds that range from 400 to 550 square feet. Uh, we've got these great one plus flexes uh, where the sort of den area can be used as a, a flexible space for for storage or for a kid's room uh, or whatever it is and they range from 550 to, to 600 square feet uh, sorry 650 square feet your two beds go from six to 700 square feet uh, two bed plus flexes from seven to 800 square feet and three bedrooms uh, from 900 to 1400 square feet and then the three in dens are 15 and up So we're going to talk a little bit now about how you're able to get a, a condominium at the United. Uh, we're going to talk about some key dates uh, and and the process of what that looks like. So next week, as I've already mentioned, uh, on March 27th is the Platinum VIP Broker Launch. And th that's when uh, our team is going to go in and get the floor plans and get the prices. And that's when we're going to be in touch with you. And and uh, for, uh, in, the, in the coming days, we encourage you to reach out to us. If you're on this call and you're interested uh, and you want more information on this condominium, reach out to us, send us an email, uh, uh, have us uh, get on the phone with us. Uh, talk about the some of the some of the things that you're looking for so that we can we know ahead of time uh, and we can help coordinate all that uh, we'll receive the floor plans and prices around noon uh, and we should have all the assets ready to go for for later in the afternoon on March the 28th the following day this is when we're going to have our uh, our private VIP client event and this is when you can come down, you can meet with the team, we can go through the floor plans and prices in detail, we can give you our suggestions on the units that we think are great in this building. Um, and this is the day that you'll be able to submit your suite uh, reservation forms in person. Um, so we'll be holding these meetings throughout the weekend. Uh, March 28th will be the first day and everybody on this call will get an invite to that. So like I said, between now and March the 27th, uh, we want you to be as prepared as possible. Uh, if you have any questions or feel like we've missed anything on the webinar tonight, please reach out to us directly. You can use the chat box uh, on the side, uh, ask the questions, ask whatever questions you have. Um, you all have our email addresses. If you're on this call, you, it means you received our, uh, our email to, to, to join the call. So hit reply on the email. And, and we'll get back to every single person one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, over the coming days. So that's everything we have for tonight. We wanna to thank you immensely for joining us this evening, and we cannot wait to work with you at United Condos.